Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this effect. So there's quite a bit of interesting stuff to get through, so let's make a start. So first of all, let's check up on our project setup. I've got 19, 20, 10, 80. I've got 25 frames a second and I've got a duration of 20 seconds. So the first thing I want to do is come over to the library generators and grab a color solid. So let's uh, pick a color for this. I'm going to grab the grayscale sliders here and set this value to 5%. So really nice, really nice dark gray. And then I'm going to duplicate that color solid, right click duplicate, come to properties, set the anchor point, the Y anchor point to 540 and the Y position to negative 270 and then the X rotation to 90 degrees. Now, obviously we can't see anything at the moment. I just want to show you what we will have eventually. So I'm just going to, just for the purposes of showing you, I'm going to add a light, switch to 3D, and you can now see that we've got our stage on which everything is going to sit. So I'm going to delete that light. That was just, just to show you. And I'm also going to select this group and scale it up to 200% to give us enough to play with. And now I'm going to make another new group at the top, Object New Group. And I'm going to create, coming down here, a circle. So hold down the Shift and Option key, to drag out a circle. Let's reset its transform. So let's come over to Shape. I want Fill, no Outline. And let's click on the color swatch. Again, I've got the grayscale slider. And let's select 40% gray. And let's come over to the geometry. And here I want a radius of 480. So then let's come back over to the library and let's select generators and membrane. Let's bring that in above the circle. Come over to the inspector. Just going to do a little bit of work on the membrane to get it to be more the sort of shape that I want. So the start one value here, I'm going to set to negative 2.5. And then the start two value, I'm going to set to negative 1.5. And the end three value, I'm going to set to four. And this has given us a bit, bit more of an interesting shape to, uh, to, to do our fill with. So then I'm going to add to this some filters. So filters, distortion underwater. I can leave that at the default, so I'm happy with that. And I'm also going to select filters, distortion and uh, where we sphere. And I'm going to set this sphere radius to 500. And then I also want to add filters, blur, radial blur. And I want to set the angle to 25. And this is going to kind of soften it off, as you see. So this has given us this kind of swirling texture here. So I'm also just going to add quite quickly color, color curves. And I just want to make this a bit punchier like that. So just drag the, the Luma value up like that. So then I want to add to this uh, membrane a circular mask. So that's down here, circular mask. And so holding down the shift and option key, we can drag a mask from the center of the screen roughly like that. Come over and make sure we center it up by resetting this. Come back over to the mask properties. I want to set the mode to subtract and the radius to 450. And you'll see that's kind of just put that on the, on the edges like that. I also want to come to this group here and just add a color curves just to crunch everything down a bit. So I'm going to just crush the blacks like that. So it's give us much more definition, something like that. And you can see how that's already given us this really nice, this really nice effect here. 
So next thing I want to do is take that circle and right click duplicate and I want to move it up above the membrane. Let's come over to style. So I want to turn off fill and I want to turn on outline. And so coming over to geometry, I want to set that radius up to 495. And let's come to the style and let's just reduce this down a bit so it's a little bit darker. Sort of something like that, so somewhere below mid grey. So it's it's picking out that edge there like that. So then I want to make a new group at the top. So select the project new group. And into this group, I'm going to come to library and I'm going to look for grid. You'll notice that group is 3D because of, of what we did before. So that's, that's good. We want to keep these groups 3D. So here's my grid. Uh, let's just set that up. So kill the background opacity, set that down to zero. I want a line width of one. And let's set the feather to 0 0.06, just to soften it off just a tad. So then I want to come to properties and the X position and right click, add parameter behavior, oscillate. And we can just leave that as it is. That's fine. And then I'm going to duplicate that grid. Right click, duplicate and come over to the behavior. And here from the apply to menu, I'm going to select properties, transform position Y. So these two are moving in opposite directions. I'm not particularly bothered for the fact that it, it kind of exposes the other one underneath. That's going to be fine. So then to the master group here, I'm going to come to properties and the Z rotation. I'm going to right click, add parameter behavior, oscillate. So that default is fine for me. And what I'm also going to do is add to this group filters, distortion and twirl. So that's looking like this. So I'm going to make sure this group is set back to 2D like so. And then I also want to come down and add a circle mask. So from the center of the screen, option and shift and drag out a circular mask roughly like that. Let's reset its position to make sure it's actually centered up. What we're going to do is set the radius to 400. And we're going to invert it. And we're going to set the feather to 90. So you can see that's just kind of softened off the inside. And then we're going to duplicate that circular mask. Right click duplicate. We want to set its radius to 475. We want to set its mode to subtract and kill the feather. We don't want any feather, so zero feather. And you can see what that's done is it's tidied it up so it's sort of like sitting in the middle of everything like that. This is good. So I've renamed that group as grids. We can close it on down. And what I want to do is drag it into that master group above everything else like that. Then I'm going to come up to the project uh, and add another new group. So into this group, we want to add from the library generators lens flare. Bring that in. So let's just set up this lens flare. I want to cancel out the streak intensity and the ring radius. Don't want any of that nonsense. And this outer color here, I don't actually want it to be that. Let's just push it towards a little bit towards sort of blue there, I think. And I think I might increase that fall off to 10. So then I want to come to the center and right click, add parameter behavior, oscillate. I want object lens flare center all. So it's applying to both X and Y. I'm also just going to make this square. So I'm going to set the width and height both to 1080. So let's come back over to the uh, oscillate behavior. I want to set the amplitude to 0.6 and let's reduce the speed down to 5. And what this is going to do is kind of randomly fire it across the, the screen in a diagonal and we'll take care of the bits where it's off the screen later on. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this lens flare. And what I want to do with this duplicate is I want it to kind of run in a circle around the main object. So to do that, I'm going to come to behaviors. Uh, I'm going to just kind of reduce the amplitude here to 0.3. And down here where it says apply to, 
I'm going to select Object Lens Flare Center X. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that oscillate. So duplicate. And for the copy, I'm going to select Object Lens Flare Center Y. And now to get them to go in a circle, or rather to get it to go in a circle, I should say, we just need to adjust the phase of the second instance. So I'm going to go for a phase of 1.6. And now I think you'll see that the second lens flare, let's turn off the first one, is going in a nice circle. So then what we need to do is this group, I need to switch the type to back to 2D. And that's because I want to add filters, distortion and sphere. And this is going to make those lens flares look like I want them to look. So all I need to do here is set the sphere radius to 500. And then the group here, properties, set its blend mode to add. Because of course, as soon as we select, uh, add a, a fill, any filter to a group, it, it rasterizes it and it loses its blend mode. So set that back to add. And now we've got these two lens flares, the one randomly shooting across and the other one just progressively going around the edge. And together they really create that sense that we've got a kind of lens effect here. And then I want to take this group, uh, the lens flare group, and I want to right click and I want to group it. And I want to make this, I want to make sure rather that this group is, is set to 3D. Because I added that light earlier on, any new group that I'm making is automatically 3D, but if you haven't done that, then you'll need to switch it. And as you see, I've renamed that group as flares. So let's come on to the fun part, which is the, the actual display inside this, um, this lens. So come to the top of the project and make a, another new group. So then I'm gonna come down and select the line tool from down here. I'm going to hold down the shift key and draw a line across like that. Make sure I've got it centered up. Come over to shape geometry. And just for tidiness, I'm going to set 0.1 to negative 1000. That's the X.1. And the 0.2 to positive 1000. And coming over to style, let's set that width to 10. So then I want to come down and select the rectangle tool. So I'm just going to draw a kind of rectangle like that and let's come over to geometry and what I want here, open up the size, is a width of 100 and a height of 70. And while I'm here, I just want to adjust that roundness and let's have a value of 10. So then I wanted to zoom in onto that rectangle and what I want to do here is I want to convert to points. So click on that there, or you can do the same from the object menu there, convert to points. It does the same thing, gives you that prompt there. So we want to make sure we've got our overlays turned on and that we've got our edit points tool selected. And what we're going to do is click on this point here. That's control point four. That's the one in the bottom left hand corner select it and delete it. And then we can come to point one, which is this one up here. And what I want to do is center it on Y. So the Y value there, I'm going to set to zero. So now we've got this uh, rounded triangle. Let's come over to style. Let's turn off outline. Let's turn on fill. And I want 60% opacity here. The fill color, as you can see, is white. So let's zoom back out again. And that's my little triangle sitting in the middle there. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import the audio that I'm going to use to drive this. So I'm going to click on import and I'm going to import the thing called Alien Vox. Bring that in. And that's brought that into the audio track. So now what I'm going to do is select that rectangle. I'm going to come to properties Actually, I need to make sure I've centered it up, which I didn't do. Let's center it up just to be super tidy. And I want to open up this scale and I want to set that Y scale to zero. And then I want to right click on the Y, add parameter behavior, audio. 
And then from the drop down menu here, I'm going to select my alien vox as the source. Analyze it quickly. And you'll see now that we've got our little triangle. It's responding like so. Then what I want to do is with this group here, I want to turn it to 3D. So select the group, turn it to 3D, or you can hit that switch there. So this is going to be our cell. So let's call it cell. And because I want to use its animation in a replicator, I want to make a clone of this. So right click, make clone layer. So this clone layer, I can turn off the original cell, close down the group, turn off the original cell. This clone, I'm going to come to object and select replicate. So the shape that I want is line. And I want to set my X start point to negative 1920 and my X end point to 1920. And I also want 15 points. And the only other thing I need to do is come down to source frame offset there. This is the one here. And I want to give it a one frame source offset. So you'll see that they're moving very slightly out of sync. And that's going to give us a nice little sort of readout effect. So to this replicator, I want to add behaviors replicator sequence replicator. Uh, the parameter that I want to add is position. I want to enter a value for the X position of 1920 and set the spread all the way up to 1920. That's overkill, but it'll do. And I'm going to set the loops to three. And now what it's doing is it's firing through in sequence like that. And then for some variation, I'm going to duplicate this replicator, right click, duplicate. And all I'm going to do is just adjust the number of points down to 13. And uh, if we get to the right bit, you can see that that's kind of given us a kind of little ghost of it that's kind of offset. So that's going to just kind of add a bit of extra visual interest. You could probably add another one if you wanted to go crazy, but this is good enough for now. So again, this group that we've made here, I just want to set that to 2D and I want to apply some filters to it. So first of all, I'm going to come to filters, Gaussian blur, and I'm also going to add color and levels. So the Gaussian blur, I'm going to set an amount of 32. And with the uh, levels, I want to select alpha. And I just want to bring this in like this. Just bring those black, black and white values in like that. And what it's done is it's kind of glued everything together and, and softened it off. Let me just show you how that works. So you can see that's kind of looking a bit cheesy. But if we select both of those and turn them on, it's kind of turned it into a much gloopier kind of seamless hole. So also to this group, I want to add filters and glow and neon. And it's all much too much. So outer brightness one, outer glow 150, inner brightness 1.5, inner glow 50, edge intensity zero, and mix 75. And then I also want to add to this group a filters blur, channel blur. I really quite like channel blur. OK, so I'm going to turn off everything except blue like that. And you can immediately see what's happened. We've got this kind of nice blue glow without actually having added, added any color. So I'm just going to set that amount to 32. So then I want to take this group and I want to set it to fixed resolution. And then I want to right click and group. And again, because we're not quite there yet, I want to turn this group back to 2D. To it, I'm going to add a circular mask. So come down here, add a circular mask. So from roughly the middle of the screen, holding down the shift and the option key, drag out a circular mask like so. Come over to properties and make sure to center it up. Come back to the mask and let's set that radius to 440. And let's set that feather amount to 50. So it's kind of just softening the edges off as it gets towards the edge of the lens, as it were. And finally, to get it a little bit more sort of lens-like, I'm going to, to this group, add filters, distortion, and 
bulge. I don't want to use the sphere because that's going to be too much, but the bulge is going to give you just enough kind of little uh, circular distortion. And here I'm just going to increase the amount to 400, like so. And then I'm going to take the group and I'm going to group it, right click group, and leave that group as 3D because it's turned to 3D, or if, it's, if it hasn't in your case, make sure to switch it to 3D. So I've closed that group down and I've called it a display. And we can close down some of these other groups as well. And the next thing I want to do is add object light. So first of all, let's come to properties and the Z position I'm going to set to 500. Come back to the light itself. Let's set the intensity up to 1000 and then the fall off to one. Now it's all much too bright and that's because we haven't selected a color. But as you notice, as soon as we select a color, we can start to adjust how it looks. I'm going to go for maybe something like that or a little bit more cyan-y or you could even kind of go for green or whatever. So basically you can actually pick your color pretty much depending on uh, what you do with this light. So that's kind of quite a nice op option for this project. So I'm going to go for, I think, something like this. So we're very nearly done. And the next thing I want to do is add a camera, come to properties, and I want to set its Z position to 1500. So we finally kind of zoom back away from our scene and we can see it in the round. And we finally get to see our, 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 our environment as well. You see that kind of little um, lighting on the floor there. But I also want a reflection of the display. So I'm going to select that display group and I'm going to right click and I'm going to make a clone of it. And I want to drag this down just here above the background. Let's just adjust the clone here. Let's set its Y position to negative 640. I want to set its X scale to 90, just to shrink it in just a fraction, and its Y scale to 50%. And I want to reduce its opacity down to 5%. And I just want to add a Gaussian blur, so filters blur Gaussian blur. And let's set this amount to something like 256. So you can see that that is giving us this kind of subtle reflection on the floor, it just kind of ties it in to the scene. And very finally, let's just come to the camera and add behaviors, basic motion throw. Let's make sure to switch to ramp to final value, open up throw velocity, and this Z value let's set to negative 500. And that's just gonna give us a gentle push in like that. And the only thing I would say is that we're probably overdoing this kind of grid effect here. Uh, where is it? Grids. Let's come in there and just maybe adjust that opacity down to maybe 50%. You know, just do that to taste. It doesn't want to be too much in your face. I think that's probably pretty good in the overall scheme of things. So I hope that's been an interesting one. Thanks very much indeed for watching and see you again another time. <laughs>